Hey everybody, so I had something on my mind that I've had on my mind since yesterday. Um, I went to town and I was driving and I just started praying. I don't know why, I just felt the need to start praying. And um, I was praying for the Lord to just work with me, to bridle my tongue, to make me a better person, to let me only speak good things and positive things, to allow me to be able to help people. Um, I don't want to speak, you know bad about people. I don't want to say something that's going to offend somebody. You know, I was just praying for the Lord to work with me, to teach me to be better. And, you know, I had prayed that the entire way to town and I prayed it all the way back home. I prayed it after I got home. You know, I had just been praying, you know, that prayer upon myself most of the day. And um, later that afternoon, my aunt and uncle, they came over, they, vi they were visiting and someone, you know, they went up the road past my grandparents' house. And they said, well, who's that? You know, that's a nice vehicle. We've never seen that before. Just wondering who this person was. Nothing, like, rude or anything. They just wondered who it was. So, I answered them, told them who it was and all that. But then I added in something completely irrelevant that was unrelated to this question about who it was. I said something, com something completely rude about this person for no reason. There was no point in adding that in there. It didn't matter. It didn't matter at all. Like, why Why would I even do that? Like, it didn't even matter. And I'm somebody that I tend to speak without thinking, and I cannot count the times that I have hurt people that way. But And, like, even sometimes, like, I would say stuff and think that I had offended someone, and I didn't, and I would end up apologizing to people and even know what I was talking about. But I'm just someone I've done that my entire life. And most people that know me, they just don't even pay attention to it. So, my aunt and uncle probably didn't even pay attention to the fact that I had said this about this person. They're just like, okay, whatever, you know. But I thought and thought about it. I even thought about it after I come home. I was thinking about it when I fell asleep, you know. And I wanted the Lord to use this some way. To, to teach me some way from this. Because I don't want to be someone that constantly does that. I don't want to always feel like I have offended someone. I want the Lord to teach me how to, I want him to bridle my tongue and teach me to only speak goodness. I want him to teach me to see the positivity in things, even in people. I just want him to make me a better person in general. So anyways, um, I was thinking about it when I woke up today and I was just like, you know, Lord, Show me some way I can use this. Give me something that I just some way I can use this so it really sticks with me, or maybe I can help somebody. So I'm up and I'm taking my medicine and stuff, and I'm sitting here. And I remember a couple years ago, I had read a Bible verse about speaking ill of people, and I could not remember where it was. And I messaged my uh, fiance, and I'm like, you know. Babe, where's this at in the Bible? I know it's in there. Can you tell me what chapter it is? And, you know, he's trying to figure out exactly what I'm talking about. And then before he could even get it typed out, I told him what it was. It was just like it hit me just like that, where it was. But anyways, I want to read this to you because I feel like that we all go through points in our life where we say and do things that we kind of feel bad over or that it comes out wrong. And when you're trying to live a better life, when you're trying to be a better person, it's it's so hard to break yourself from speaking negativity, even if it's about someone else, about yourself, whatever. Even speaking negativity on your life. It's very hard to get out of the routine of doing that because your mind is used to completely going to something negative. But when you're living for Christ you tend to see things more in a light, like it's a more positive outlook on everything, even people. You tend to look for the better in people instead of just being like, hey, this person did this one time and it was real bad. Like, you don't do that. That's not what God wants you to do. That's not your place. So I'm going to read this to you and you'll kind of understand more of what I'm talking about. So I'm going to read from Titus chapter 3, one through verses 1 through 8. You can read it yourself because I know my accent's a little thick. So if you are someone that's not from my area, you might be like, what in the world is she saying? So you can read it yourself. But anyways, 
Okay, this is Titus chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates. Hold on just a second, I put a little bit closer. To be ready to every good work, to speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers but gentle shewing all meekness unto all men. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers to lust and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating on one another. But after that, the kindness and love of God, our Savior, toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us, by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of the eternal life. This is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and not profitable unto men. So, basically what this is talking about. Don't talk about other people because of their mistakes. And verse, let's see... Verse 3, you will see where it talks about for we ourselves. That means that we have sinned too. We've done it too. We've been there too. At one point in our life, nobody is brought into this world and expected like to be perfect. Like when you're brought into the world, you're a child, right? You're a baby, you're innocent. But as you grow older, you're brought into sin. You're gonna sin. That's the reason you have to repent daily. So none of us are perfect. Even someone that lives a Christian life, a clean life, however, they are still not perfect. You have to repent daily because you make mistakes. So therefore, God doesn't want you to look at someone and be like, hey, you know what this person did one time? Let me tell you what they did one time. It was really, really bad. Don't do that. Because at one point in your life, I mean, you may have not done something that is as bad as something, you know, someone else had done. Or maybe you've done something worse. But still, yet, do not talk about other people because you yourself are not perfect. You're not perfect. God didn't make us perfect. He made us in the image of Him, but we are flawed. And that's the reason that we have the opportunity to give our lives to God, allow God to teach us, and allow Him to make us better people, allow Him to work within us and make us a light to others. Because without God, we are nothing, okay? We are nothing. We are pretty much empty vessels without God. We are nothing. We can be nothing, okay? You can't compare somebody else's mistakes to your own, and you can't compare your own to somebody else's. <clears throat> Excuse me. Because we all make mistakes. They're all different. Nobody's mistakes are the same. So, therefore, don't judge someone. Don't speak something bad about them. Don't be like, hey, they did this. It don't matter. That's not your place. You were not meant to judge. That's God's job. So, don't speak evil about other people. It says to speak evil of no man. That means speak evil of nobody. Don't say nothing bad about somebody. So, you know, when you pray, you have to say, Lord... Make me a better person. Help me to not speak ill of other people. Lord, help me to be stronger and help me to see the positivity and the beauty of this person. Sorry, I got cut off. But anyways, the Lord wants us to love one another. And you have to see the beauty in one another. No matter if you see somebody out on the street. Let's say, use this for an example. You see a homeless man out on the street. This homeless man is in raggedy clothes. He's someone that probably drinks a lot because you can smell the alcohol on him. And, you know, you can tell that he lives a life of sin. And you think, Lord, this man is just disgusting. It's untelling what all he's done in his life. I bet he's a terrible person. You don't know that. 
You do not know that. You don't know what got him to that point. You don't know if he's ever done anything bad at all. He may have been someone that just fell upon bad luck. I mean, you don't know. But even if he had done bad things, why is it your place to say, hey, that's a bad guy. He's a drunk. That's not your place. That's not your place. Listen, when you see somebody like that, you try to help them. You speak positivity to them. You talk to them about Jesus. You be like, you know, you know what? I know somebody that can save you. I know somebody that can bring you through the fire. I know somebody that can help you be a better person. I know somebody that can bring you off of this street because he works miracles every day. That's what you do. You, instead of judging somebody, instead of speaking something evil about them, try to find some way to help them. I mean, now, don't get me wrong. There are going to be people you're going to meet in your life you cannot help because they are just some people out there that just refuse, refuse to talk about Jesus. They refuse to allow anyone to even offer to help them, even if you're not talking to them about Jesus. But, you know, I'm somebody that if I seen somebody, I'll use this for an example. I say I seen someone they didn't have a lot of money. And I handed them, like, a couple dollars or whatever. And I said, you know, I started quoting some type of scripture about um, about helping people. Like, there's, I mean, there's tons of scriptures about helping one another. There's scriptures about the rich man and the poor man. I mean, we could really go down through there. Let's say I started talking about that. Or I just simply said, you know, I feel it on my heart that I needed to give you this money. Because, you know, Jesus wants us to love one another. He wants us to love like he did. So I'm giving you this money today. And I don't expect nothing back. But I want you to know that me and Jesus love you. And just leave it at that. Because sometimes just that little bit of talking about Jesus, just that little bit of being like, hey, you know, I know somebody that can that can help you out here. He's a miracle worker. You know, just letting that light shine from you, just that little bit, it can make a huge difference. But there are some people that you will meet in your life that just refuse, just refuse to have that help. And that's really sad. It's heartbreaking, but that's just the world we live in. But regardless, do not talk evil about people. And I'm guilty of it myself. That was the entire point of this. Like you heard it at the beginning, you know, I'm somebody I've done this my entire life and even without knowing. And, you know, there would be times that I, like I said, I would, I would contact people and be like, hey, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to say that. If it offended you, I'm so sorry. You know, that's just the type of person I am because I don't want to hurt anyone. I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. I don't want anybody to feel bad about their self because I have came from, I mean, don't get me wrong. I was raised in church. I was raised in a Christian home, but I still made mistakes. And I have a past. And I mean, people remember things from my past. And sometimes I have to, like, stand up and be like, you know what? That was a long time ago. That's not who I am. But everybody shouldn't have to feel like they, like they have to defend their mistakes. Because we are not their judge. It is not our place. God is their judge. The only person that they have to ask forgiveness of is God. I mean, if you hurt someone, by all means, say, yeah, please forgive me. I didn't mean to do that. But the thing about this is, too, you may ask forgiveness of someone, and they may be like, no, I can't forgive you. That's on them, though, because you've done your part. But see, God's different. When you say, Lord, I need you to forgive me of my sins. I am wholeheartedly asking you, Lord, to forgive me of my sins, to wash me clean. When he washes you clean, regardless of what this world sees, your sin is gone. That's the way it works. So don't speak evil of others. You don't know their journey. And just remember, you came from a dark spot in your life too.